I'm going to be working on an odd count peyote bead stitch pattern. So I thought I'd show you how I'm going to start that off. So I think a lot of people get a little bit scared about odd count because it can be a little bit fiddly, but I'll show you how to do that. So to get started with, I'm just going to pick up my 15 beads to, that I need to start. So I'm using size 11 Delica beads, which are ideal for peyote stitch because they just slot together so neatly. So make sure I get all the beads on my needle that I need. Let's just check that. So five. So I just need one more bead on there. So I need to leave a little bit of a tail at the end of my thread for what I'm doing um, with my project. So I'm just gonna slide those down. And now this is the tail side and this is my working thread side. So I need to be working now back towards my tail adding in more beads for my second row. So I'm going to pick one bead up, slide a bead out of the way and go through the next bead on my thread. Just pin that down and pull that up. So you should find that you might need a bit of adjustment, but those first few beads now, the first two sit on top of one another and the next bead forms like a small triangle. Just there. So now I'm going to pick up my next bead slide one along, go through the next. There we go, that's slotted in quite neatly there. Now I tend to always find if you make your knee, your beads sit where you need them to be as you go rather than trying to pull your tension up after you've threaded all your beads, it just makes life a lot easier for yourself. And it also means if you have missed a bead or gone through the wrong bead, it's immediately obvious. So I've picked up a new bead, slide one along, go through the next and to find pinning your beading down to your bead mat does help with everything there we go to make those sit in the right place there we go it's building up nicely starting to actually look a little bit like period stitch rather than just a row of beads so carry on all the way along to the end so slide miss one bead go through the next All the way along there. Slide along and go through the next. So at the end there, we still need to pick up a new bead. And this is gonna sit here. But at the moment, it's just flopping about. So to anchor that in place, we actually want to go back on ourselves. So I'm going to go through that first bead there. So by doing that little bit at the end, it's got that bead in place. And also I'm now in the right position that I can start beading. So I'm actually going to turn that over and start beading back along this way. So now you can see easily where you're going, all the next row of beads are going to be. They're going to fill those gaps all the way along there. So pick up a bead, go through the next one. I always find this first, be first row a little bit awkward because at the moment all your beading wants to spin round and twist about. It'll probably have a natural way that it wants to sit, but to be perfectly honest, once you've completed this third row it will stop that from happening so if the beads at this stage unless you've got um, colours that make a difference as to where your beads sit and um, it doesn't matter if it does twist around because uh, my beading's all the same colour at the moment that doesn't matter so just go across here so that's how you get started with your Odd count peyote stitch. That's the third row complete. Okay, so this is some uh, peyote stitch, odd count peyote stitch that I'm already working on. So I'm going to just show you how I add my rows and do my little turn at the end. 
So this next row that I'm doing in my pattern is all one colour, so that makes life easier. And it does start off in exactly the same way, so you've got a gap right at the beginning of the row here, so you just go through that bead. You tend to find a good little trick if you end up loose like this on the beginning of the row, which often happens, is to just pull the new bead slightly and then pull your thread again, and that neatens it up really nicely. So we're just going to work all the way across here. So the nice thing about Odd Count POT Stitch is that it allows you to do um, symmetrical designs, which I tend to do a lot of. Our uh, Night Owl kit uh, uses symmetrical design and it, it's really nice. It means that you have an even border edge around something and particularly um, features where there's faces and things, you often have um, a centre point that you work out from rather than it um, being even count. So this is where it starts, to, of course my thread gets caught up at this stage. So now I've got that sorted out. So here right at the end, this is where odd count gets a little bit more complicated to even count, POT stitch. So obviously I need a new bead. And then obviously right at the end here, that's just floating around, which isn't ideal. We need this to be anchored in place but really our next row is um, starting on this side. So to make sure that you're anchoring this bead in place and also getting into the right position to start your next row, you just have to do a little circle almost. So I tend to go into the next bead along and then diagonally back on myself. So I'm gonna go through those two beads there to begin with. Can you see where my needle is coming out there? So through those two beads that keeps that little bead in place on the corner there. Then this thread needs to be coming out of this new bead here. So obviously we're all the way over here at the moment, so we need to come out of here. So the next thing to do is come one bead along on that second row in, and then diagonally back on yourself. So it's almost a little triangle. So pull that thread tight there, and then now you can easily go through that corner bead. So through there and then you're ready to continue with your next row. So you always with odd count have just one side that you're always having to do the fiddly bit. Although really once you've done it a couple of times it doesn't feel that fiddly. And at this end you're always going to have a straightforward turn And that is how you keep going. So it often helps if you're doing a more complicated pattern to have a marker on your pattern as you go. So you can either tick beads off or have a little ruler that keeps you on track. This pattern is quite simple and it does have a few rows of plain beads in between each paw print. And there's another row complete. That bead's just got caught up. There we go. So I'll do another row and speed it up and then when we get to this end I'll show you how to do that again. And with all pattern, all uh, videos, you can always pause them where you need to see more detail and play them as many times as you need. So now I'm at the far end again, I'm picking up my bead, I'm anchoring diagonally down two beads at the side, pulling that up so my bead sits on that corner, I might just have to give it a helping hand to sit in the right place, there we go, and then diagonally backwards, and then through that new bead to begin your next row. So it does obviously get easier and then you just keep going. Right.